All right. So good afternoon, good evening, depending on your own time zone or good morning. You know, um, I welcome you to this webinar and the conversation is really about teams. I want to start this conversation by asking everyone in the room to share with me in the chat box, what is your expectation today? What exactly are you expecting to take out of this conversation? In other words, why did you register for this webinar? Share it in the chat box. And um, I'm gonna read it out just before we start. So share it in the chat box. You know, you're in here for this conversation. Why? What do you wanna take away? Let's set the ball rolling. Read, share it in the chat box. What do you wanna take out of this conversation today? What do you want to take out of this discussion? Share it in the chat box with me, and I'll be reading it uh, from here. I would have set up the whiteboard, but it's fine. Just type, and I will read it. What do you want to take out of this discussion? Yes, yes, yes. How to build effective and productive teams. Interesting. Aki, I got that entry. Next. What do you want to take out of this discussion? Why did you register for this meeting? Yes. I want to learn how to build a great team that wins all the time. Thank you for that, Manuel. Yes. Why did you enroll into this meeting? What do you want to take out? How to be a good and important team member. Hmm. Someone to build teams, someone to be a good team member. Interesting, Inka. Brilliant. Who else? I want to improve on my team building and leadership skills. Hmm. Powerful. Thank you very much, Dr. Yeah? Yes, so for those who just joined us, we're writing and sharing what we want to take out of this seminar. So that in the next 30 to 45 minutes of sharing a conversation and all of us sharing knowledge, uh, we would be in perspective, yes. So four people have shared, we're at least uh, 10 of us in this. Yes, why did you enroll into this meeting? What do you want to take out? Time is life. We know often say time is money. Time is not only money, time is life. So if you're investing your life in this conversation, what do you want to take out? To gain more knowledge on how to improve my team. Okay, thanks if you. Yes, yes, yes. You want to take out of the conversation. So I've seen we heard from Yinka, from Aki, from Emmanuel, from Ifi, from Otoye. I've not heard from Yusuf, from Wisdom, from Alfred. Eric seems to be having a challenge connecting. So Yusuf, Wisdom, uh, Alfred, to gain more knowledge on how to be more professional in human resource. Yusuf, entry captured. Okay. Wisdom and uh, Alfred, you're on the call, share what you would like to take out of, from this conversation over the next 30 to 45 minutes of our engagement. Okay, I'm gonna move on very quickly. The subject of team managing, team management, team building, et cetera, everything that has to do with teams is a very broad and interesting conversation. If you saw the invitation, one of it said, ability to increase efficiency and productivity, thanks wisdom. One of it said, you can't take out your lines from your head with one thumb. So that's my head. How do I take out lies from my head with one thumb? Such a, an adult task. Or you can have a good clap with one hand. All right? So if you're gonna have a good clap, 
You put the first palm in front, and then you start calling down rain. Just one finger, two fingers, three fingers, four fingers, and then five fingers. <laughs> so you want to step out of this place, um, being a strong link, for example, if you say to yourself, uh, I, I want to be able to add value to my team. I want to be a great team player. Interesting. And then you want to leave out here saying, I want to be a better leader. I want to be a more effective leader. And that says, I want to grow my team. I want to understand team dynamics as it relates to HR. I tell you, whether you're in a team or you're leading a team, you can't avoid a team. Whether you're in a team or you're leading a team, you can't avoid the team. You can't avoid it. All right? Alfred wants to know how to get knowledge and to improve himself. More knowledge about what, Alfred? How to improve yourself in what areas, Alfred? But it's good. So, but in perspective, what I'm going to attempt to do in a very short time, because you see the conversation around teams can take as long as uh, uh, one whole week and one whole week, nine to five, and we still haven't exhausted the meat of it. I'm going to be taking snippets of what I have curated over the years about building teams and about functioning and thriving within teams. I've worked in high performing teams and I have worked with difficult teams or worked in difficult teams. And like I said, whether you're at home or you're in church or you're at work or you're in a social organization, you can't you can't even avoid it. Aristotle said something. He said, man separated from the society is either a beast or a god. What he meant to say is that it is impossible for you to exist in isolation. It is impossible for you to exist in isolation. So you need to in, you need to ex exist, and the only way to do that is to coexist. The best way to exist is to coexist. Now, follow me very closely. There is a difference between surviving and thriving. Surviving and thriving. Those who understand team dynamics. They thrive. Those who just say, well, this is where I found myself. Let me, there's nothing I can do about it. Like I told you, you can't do anything about it. You must be in a team. If you do nothing about it, if you do not understand the art of teams, the science of So the question, how do I thrive in a team? I'm going to start from there. How do I thrive in a team? All right. What are the things I need to do to enable me thrive in a team? What steps do I need to take? So that I am not swallowed by the team, intimidated by the team, or considered irrelevant to the team. I tell a story. A young man was working in a firm. And the principal of that firm didn't regard him at all. In fact, he treated him with ignominy. So the boy now wanted to go for his master's. And then he asked his uh, principal to give him a letter of reference, which he took to the embassy. Incidentally, he did not open the principal's letter of reference. True story. When the embassy official opened the letter, the principal wrote, 
he is incurably bad. Among the tired of things the principal wrote, he wrote for the book, he is incurably bad. Now, if somebody writes that kind of reference for you, you probably can guess the outcome. Do you think the embassy is going to give him the visa? Uh, let me see your, your response in the chat box. Do you think the embassy will give him a visa? It's letter of reference. Yes? You can unmute yourself. Tell me, what do you think the embassy is going to do? Someone said never. <laughs> okay. Yes. What do you think the embassy is going to do? Most unlikely, unless. Okay. Let me read that. Okay. Unless there are other references that are better. They may, because they will know that. Because they will know he didn't open it. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. All right. So here's what they did. The interviewer looked at him and said, no one is incurably bad. I'm going to give you a visa. And the system to give me a visa to go to the UK. But that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is that after he left, the principal, uh, when he wanted an assignment done, he'll say, um, what about this document? They'll say, let's you know, give him a pseudonym. Let's say a pseudonym, give him a pseudonym like Peter. They say, oh. Uh, where did Peter even keep it? Let me call Peter. Boss was looking. Okay. Who did this work? I want to see where. Oh, let's email Peter. We don't know where he kept it. His name kept coming up in the office. And he suddenly said, Why are you people calling Peter, Peter, Peter? What value did he add? It was then it occurred to his principal that because he was not regarded by his boss, the boss never gave him any assignment. This guy is useless. Remember what he wrote in his reference. He's incurably bad. So the boy had nothing to do. Now, because he had nothing to do, all the other colleagues who had a lot to do and couldn't will pass their extra jobs to him. Because they saw the quality of work he was doing, they began to pass more jobs to him. So every time I saw him going home late at night, because I know this person personally, I was always wondering what he would be doing in the office till so late at night. He was busy doing other people's assignments. The keys I'm about to share with you are keys that will first and foremost give you visibility within a team. Secondly, make you invincible from sharks in a team. Thirdly, give you influence within a team, especially when you do not have yet authority. And then I'm going to end with how to grow a strong team. I will just share with you the elements that will enable you to achieve that. But let us look at your own role, first and foremost, how do you ensure that you have visibility within a team? Visibility, VI, SI. Invincibility in context here means your ability not to be become the footmat of other people. Invincibility, so that if you are doing something right, you don't become a victim of the system. And then thirdly, how can you grow influence within the team? Five keys. I'm going to expound all the five keys. We call them the IRMP creed. So take your bio sheet of paper, write it number one. I will try to understand before I seek to be understood. 
I will try to understand before I seek to be understood. Now, this particular concept speaks of in the, the, the only way to be outstanding is to have understanding. If you want to be outstanding, you need to be, you need to have a better understanding than everyone else in that team. And how are you going to achieve that? How's that going to be possible? What are the things I'm, I need to do to improve my level of understanding within a team so that I become outstanding? The first thing you need to do is you need to improve on your listening quotient. How observant are you about the things that are happening in your environment? Do you listen? There's a difference between hearing and listening. You can hear without listening, but you cannot listen without hearing. Many people hear what is going on in the team, but they don't listen to what is happening in the team. And as such, they lose the ability to understand the dynamics of that team. So they're not outstanding. You see? Understanding is your ability to spot the signposts. If you're traveling somewhere with a Google map or, and the, the thing says left, in 100 meters on left, ladies and gentlemen, in 100 meters turn left, in 15 meters, there is already a left turn. If you take that left turn, you are right, you took the left turn, but you have missed the way already. Has it ever happened to any one of us when we use the Google map? It has happened to me, I don't know about you. You heard it say turn left, but you didn't take note of the fact that it says in 100 meters. So when you saw the next left, you say, oh, it's left. You took that turn. Nine out of 10 people in teams hear, but don't listen. The danger with that is you only hear what you want to hear. Do you know that you can project into a relationship what your perspectives are? This is the reason why many leaders fail because they thrive on praise Well, they can hear that, but they are not listening. So when that happens, for example, they only go with the positives. They do not deal with the negatives. They don't want to know what didn't go well. They only focus on what went well. So one of the ways is I will try and understand before I seek to be understood. I'm going to put myself in the shoes of everyone in my team before I put them in my shoes. Is somebody learning how to gain influence within a team? It means that I won't sit in judgment over others. You know, it's so easy to judge. You judge from your position. You do not judge from their perspective. Like it. Every time you judge is because you sit in your position. And from your position, you can pass judgment. Sometimes I meet people in a conflict and I say to them, 
haven't heard you, may I say that if I were in your shoes, I probably would have done the same thing you did. It is wrong. But if I were your shoes, I may have done the same thing. What has happened? I've not judged him. I will try to understand before I seek to be understood. I will try to listen. When you listen, two things happen. You not only hear verbal communication, but you hear non-verbal communication, which is what we call body language. A combination of accurately interpreting verbal and non-verbal communication is what makes you astute. Rather, what? Astute. An astute person does not walk into a trap. An astute person looks before he leaps. What's the purpose of these principles? Number one, make you visible. Number two, make you invincible. And number three, grow your influence. The second thing, what's the first one? I'll try to understand before I seek to be understood. The second thing you need to do so that you can thrive in a team, not just survive in the team. Remember how we started? There are some who thrive in teams. There are those who survive in teams. I don't just want you to survive. To survive means you're just marking time. But to thrive means you are able to grow in a team. Second principle, I will communicate and not retaliate. I will communicate and not retaliate. Anyone who wants to thrive in teams must first of all understand the power of communication. <laughs> the first thing you want to ask yourself is, how do I become more effective to effective communication? What are the things that multiply my ability as an effective communicator? I will communicate and not retaliate. Everywhere you see retaliation, it is because communication has broken down. When you see a person say, I don't like the way it was, he didn't greet me, I won't greet him tomorrow. Retaliation. He sent a mail copying our boss, and it was a mail that indicts me. I will wait for the opportunity to strike back. Retaliation. Why does he walk in the office as if he's better than everyone else? I will cut his wings. I will clip our wings. I know where to get him. Retaliation. The first and most effective ways to communicate is with yourself first. What are the thoughts going through your head? I want you to write this down. The greatest robber of mankind is his bias. You need to be able to ask yourself, why do I think the way I do? Why is my mind working this way? Why don't I like this person? Why does this person antagonize me? How can I express myself? Actually, communication because you spoke your mind. Have you ever met people who will say, I have spoken my mind? It is not speaking your mind that makes you effective in communication. 
What makes you effective in communication is the ability of the person you have spoken to to be won over to your side. That's effective communication. The ability of the person to think about whatever it is you have said. The ability of the person to understand the context, not only the concept. People can understand the concept of what you have said, but not the context. You see where the work is. You want to grow in a team. You want to thrive in a team. I will communicate and not retaliate. So a person says something that is uncomplimentary, and then you are thinking, what am I going to say that will be as Treat people. How do you treat people? Do you treat people the way you want to be treated? Do you treat people the way they treat you? Or do you treat people the way they deserve to be treated? Three dynamics. How do you treat people? Do you treat people the way they treat you? Just think about it. Reflect. You don't have to answer. Or do you treat people the way you want them to treat you? Or do you treat people the way they deserve to be treated? Take down these three questions, reflect on them, and take out time to apply each of them, and then revert to me at a later time and tell me which of them works best for you. Did we all get the three questions? Question one, do I treat people the way they treat me? Write it down. Do I treat people the way they treat me? Number two, do I treat people the way I want them to treat me? Number two, do I treat people the way I want them to treat me? Number three, do I treat people the way they deserve to be treated? So what should you do with these questions? Reflect on them. Ask yourself, where do I really belong? All right? After you have answered that question, just be by yourself. Take some time without distraction. Reflect on your life and your actions and general behavioral patterns. Which category do I belong? Put it down. Then take some one or two playing sheets again and then make up your mind and say, this week, I will treat people the way they treat me. Take another week and say, consciously, I will treat people the way I want them to treat me. Not the way they treat me, but the way I want, I would like them to treat me. Then in the third week, Say, I will treat people the way they deserve to be treated. Not how they treat me, not how I want them to treat me, but how I perceive they deserve to be treated. After you've done it, look at them, the experiences, and ask yourself which one works best for me, and then come back and share it with me. Okay? So if your name is Infinix S5, you need to rename yourself. Okay, I think that person has a challenge with their connection. All right, let's move on. For those who just joined, here's where we are at. How do I thrive within a team and not survive? Because those are the only two options. How do I swim and not get swallowed? I'm sharing with us five principles. Number one, I'll try to understand before I seek to be understood. Number two, I will communicate and not retaliate. Number three, 
I will apologize and take responsibility. I will apologize and take responsibility. Now, apologizing is research has shown that's one of the most difficult things to do. But let me tell you the general perspective about perspective about apologizing. People apologize when they realize that they may have sidestepped or rolled out of line. But in the context with which we are discussing apology, your ability to thrive within a team. You don't only apologize when you're wrong, but when the value of the relationship exceeds the consequence of the offense, you apologize even when you're right. This is your ability to use apology as a bridge. Think of the value of bridges across the world. They shorten time of travel. They make unsafe places safe. They improve the aesthetics of cities. You shorten the time of building people capital. You make an easily unsafe and toxic relationship safe. And you improve the aesthetics of your relationship. When you understand the value of apology. I will apologize and take responsibility. In this context, apologizing is beyond apologizing to others, even to yourself. Rather than justifying certain decisions or taking it for granted, you can say to yourself, in this area, as justifiable as it seems, I could have done better. I make a commitment to do better. Taking responsibility catalyzes your ability in a team. Because the dynamics of most teams is looking for who to blame. When you look at everything that goes wrong within a team, oftentimes they say, who caused it? Who caused it? Everyone is always looking for who to blame. But you elevate your understanding of team dynamics when you take responsibility. Remember the three things I want you to do. Number one, be visible. Number two, be invincible. Number three, increase your influence. Affluence without influence is like smoke without fire. The fourth thing, I will go the extra mile. I will go the extra mile. You can't soar with the eagles when you boom with the turkeys. Every time I ask people the difference between work and job, and until you're asked that question, you may never really, it may never really occur to you that there is a cardinal differential between work and job. But then when you realize that they can fire you from your job, but no one can take your work from you, that's when you then begin to find out that your work relates more to your skill than to your assignment. The ability to improve your skill and your offering, the ability to go over and beyond your immediate, what you would call target or expectation. Such people are very rare within a team, very rare. Because they are rare, they are never ever the rare. Never. When you see rare people, they are always ahead. Goldfish has no hiding place. Remember the three things you want to take out of this place? Visibility, invincibility, and influence. I'll go the extra mile. You know what Bruce Lee said? You know the martial artist Bruce Lee? He said something very interesting. He said, Fear not the man who practices 
1,000 kicks once. Fear the man who practices one kick a thousand times. Fear not the man who practices 1,000 kicks once. Fear the man who practices one kick a thousand times. Because that man who practices one kick a thousand times, he is what you call a masterpiece. Why? He has made his work look like luck. His work has become like the preoccupation of his left hand. He is so good that everything he does distinguishes him. I will go the extra mile. And the fifth thing says, I'll be a problem solver. Here's the statistics you will find. In every workplace, in every team, there are at least three sets of people. Statistics shows that 10% of them cause the problem. They are the ones who throw spanner in the works. They are the ones who look for the problem of it. When you tell them solution to a problem, they tell you the problem of the solution. 10%. First thing is drawbacks. Another 10% are what you call problem solvers. Eggheads. Thinkers. Innovators. Men of initiative. People of passion. Ladies and gentlemen, if you take out 10% problem solvers, 10% those who cause the problem, how many percent does it leave us with? Share in the chat box. How many percent is left in the team? Yes, yes. Share the chat box. I want to see. Let's do the maths together. Simple maths. If you were listening, you should have the answer by now. <laughs> Yes. You can unmute and share. A lot about share. What was my question? Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes it's enjoyable to hear, but it's work to listen. So let me know who's listening. Yes. So we all missed out on that powerful point. What did you take out of the statistics? <laughs> no, I, I <laughs> you got that right, but you know, I wanted to hear from Aki Chesona. Josie, Michael, Joy, Juliet, 
Kemi, Otoe, Shoaib, who else? You know. Oladapo. Okay, Oladapo is, uh, you know, the sound isn't there. Okay, so here's what I said. You see, you're stepping out of this place, making a commitment to listen. If you can hear me clearly, Unmute yourself so I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. I can hear, I can hear you. you, sir. All right. Now, pay close attention. Statistics have shown 10 people cost the problem in the workplace. 10% of people cost the problem in the workplace. We are very pessimistic about any idea, any initiative. You know, they always have, they always see the dark side. 10% solve problems. They are very positive, very intuitive, great initiative. And that leaves us with how many percent? 80%. 80% of the people in the workplace will neither cause the problem or solve it, they just go with the flow. They just do what is necessary. You can't be a problem solver with a general perspective about your workplace. For you to be a problem solver, you need four senses. Number one is a sense of purpose. Number two is a sense of ownership. Number three, a sense of belonging. And number four, team spirit. For you to be a problem solver, you need a sense of purpose, a sense of ownership, a sense of belonging, and team spirit. Four things you need to be a problem solver. A sense of purpose asks the question, why am I here? A sense of belonging asks the question, how do I fit in here? A sense of ownership asks the question, if it was mine, how would I treat it? Understanding the dynamics of team spirit enables you to know that to go fast, you go alone, but to go far, you need to go with others. These are the keys that will enable you become visible, increase your visibility, increase your invincibility, means that people can't crush you, and at the end, increase your influence. What is influence? the ability to know the difference between power and authority. Authority is the position you occupy, but power is the ability to wield people, to convict people, to win people over. Many people have authority, few people have power. The idea behind it is that people may be political about giving you authority, but it is your responsibility to grow your power. And the way to grow your power is to make sure you try to understand before you seek to be understood, communicate and not retaliate, apologize and take responsibility, go the extra mile, have a sense of purpose, a sense of ownership, a sense of belonging and team spirit. Now I'm going to close with When a person wants to grow a team, what are the most fundamental things to look out for? I'll give you a tip. What are the most fundamental things to look out for when growing a team? The most fundamental thing to look out for is the value. 
How do you understand values? The best way to understand the concept of values is to understand the difference between character and reputation. If I ask you what are your values or your most important value, don't answer my question. Just reflect on the concept of character and reputation. Your character is who you are. Your reputation is who people believe that you are. And the book titled Who You Are When No One Is Looking by Bill Hybels, one of the most thought-provoking questions is, if your character should meet your reputation in the dark, will they recognize each other? Your character and your reputation is what constitutes your values. So you, if you want to build a team, look at the character and the reputation of every single team member. The greatest teams are teams that have shared values and same goals. Thank you very much. Now I'll take questions. I'll take questions, you know, um, you've listened to me. If you want to ask a question, raise your virtual hand. Uh, you want to make an observation or a clarification, raise your virtual hand. And then I'll just take those questions to balance the equation in our conversation. Any questions, contributions or observations? Any questions? contributions, observations. All right, so um, just raise your virtual hand and then I'll call on you and then you would uh, unmute yourself and then ask your question or share it in the chat box if you're in a noisy environment. Okay, Manuel, shoot. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for this wonderful session. Um, I'm grateful we're, we're learning a lot from this class. I want to appreciate you. I have a question to ask, sir, yes. because we're talking about team and we're talking about growing team and building influence. But sir, we understand that in this time we're working and so many people are working in, in an organization where there are toxic people, people who undermine the um, progress of others within the team so i want to ask how do you manage or how do you work around a people like this within your team but the person those people within your team are toxic so whatever you do they try to they try to undermine the progress your results you were doing whatever you were doing in the organization so how do you manage such a person while working in a toxic environment Thank you, sir. Okay, great, great, great. Now, the key to managing others is first managing yourself. The illustration that will support the conversation is like the hen, its cheek, and the hawk. So I'm gonna give two analogies. The first thing the hen does is to ensure that it protects his cheek. So I grew up in the village and I noticed that the hawk is like a kite. It just moves, 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 picks a cheek and takes off. It's very swift. The hawk does not hunt the chicken. The hawk hunts the chick. Principle number one. With that understanding, the, the mother hen when it, it has the slightest inkling that the chicks are in danger, it hides off the chicks and then steps out. So we notice that whenever the mother hen starts to quick, we look, we only see the mother hen, we can't find the chicks. What has it done? It has hidden the chicks under leaves and it's now moving around. Why? It knows that the hawk cannot carry it. 
it is not the hawk that is in danger. It is the chick. It is not the chicken that is in danger. It is the chick. The first thing you want to identify is what is in danger. You think you're the one in danger. It's the quality of your work that is in danger and the potential of you rising in that organization and the perception of your, of your colleagues, superiors, equals, and subordinates that is in danger. It's not you. If they can poison the minds of those who work with you, if they can distract you from doing excellent work, if they can focus on ensuring that you are not visible, then they would have achieved their purpose. So you don't manage them. The chicken has no control over the thirst of the hawk. It has control over protecting and covering its cheeks. Your ability to know what it has, what is at risk and what level of risk is what makes you different. So manage yourself first. So let's, if, if the people are toxic, make sure that you're not toxic. Every time they project toxicity to you, don't react to toxicity, respond. You know the difference? When a person takes a medication for headache and suddenly, so this happened in my family. My wife took a medication that was designed to deal with an infection. But by the next day, she broke out with rash. What's happening? She's reacting to the medication. When the doctor says you're reacting to the medicine, that is negative. It means that the medicine is now doing some other adverse thing rather than the one they sent it to do. But when the doctor says, oh, I can see you're responding to treatment, it means it's positive. It is dealing with the issue. Most of the toxic people want you to react because it is your reaction they are going to work with. For example, they have already concluded in the workplace that you are very hardworking. They themselves are average and it's, it's settled. Everybody knows. Instead of them working on their being average, they want people to perceive you as being average too. That is nothing special about you. So what are you going to protect? Protect your level of excellence. Don't be distracted by side comments. Don't be distracted by their negativity, respond to it. Every time they say, your work is not good enough, make it better. Protect those chicks. When a person comes to ask you, they said X, Y, Z about you. Don't say, my conscience is clear. I won't talk about it. No. A popular lie will thrive over a silent truth. If they ask you, give a clear perspective because perception is stronger than reality. And I tell you with this in conclusion, you must be consistent if you are going to outwit a potential toxic person. Consistency, consistency. It is consistency that makes people identify you. Consistency projects your identity in the workplace. And after a while, they realize that you can't catch a person who is running as long as they are not stopping. All right? I hope that supports you. Julian. And then we'll take joy. Okay, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much for your session so far. Though I joined a bit late, but I was able to get a lot out of this. Okay, so here is my question. Um, I have actually tried, you know, working with a team, you know, at different um, phases or occasions. 
since 2018 specifically. But I noticed that maybe by the time I have a team, you know, everything is going well and suddenly everybody just backs out. Mm. Not that they tell me they are backing out or anything. I just see that they are no longer committed. And I've tried my best, you know, to all these times, I try my best to like be part of what they are also doing because I feel like, because most times it's always usually maybe like, let me say volunteers, like I want to do something and I have people that want to work with me who are maybe from the beginning, they are even eager to work with me. But on the long, long run, I just see that they are no longer interested. So I still try as much as possible to, you know, to reach out to them, to check up on them and all. So, but it has happened like that a couple of times. And for me, I feel like I'm a good leader. Mm. Not necessarily because I'm trying to, you know, give myself accolade. Like I've, I've, I've been able to do certain things that a leader should do, but mm. I don't see, I don't seem to see like an improvement. So I don't know. Do you think there's anything I've done, I, I was doing wrong, or is there any solution? Because at some points I was just like, I think I just have to do it on my own. But again, I say that I can't do it on my own because I still need people. So. I just I don't know if you have maybe an answer to that question. Then the second, what does someone do when you have a difficult boss? I've worked with a number of persons. Like I feel like I can work with anybody. Yes. Um, you know, sometimes especially because maybe I'm trying to learn something from the person, and I don't want, I want to overlook the person's character, even though it might be an injury. But I'm still like I can cope with this person, but. When you get to that point that you can no longer take it, I know sometimes some person will tell you to quit. What if you still want to, you're not done learning what you want to learn. Do you just back out like that? What do you do when you have a difficult boss? Thank you Brilliant. so much, sir. Thank you very much, um, Juliet. You've asked two powerful questions. The first question relates to managing a team. Why is the steam of my team going out? Okay. I'll give you two reasons why that happens, and then I will ask you a few questions, Juliet. The first reason why people lose team in teams is when the leader is not leading from the front. Um, people don't do what you expect, they do what you inspect. Um, the second reason is when they do not see results because only a fool doubts proof. Can't everybody wants to be associated with success? These are the two cardinal reasons why people lose steam in a team. So my first question I want to ask you, Juliet, of these two, which one do you think might be the reason? Um, I think the first one. Okay. Explain. It like I am not giving the person enough time to, you know, to do that thing. But on the other hand, I don't want because of the person's negligence or inconsistency, then everything that we are supposed to do will fail. So sometimes I just take on that responsibility and I do it. And um, even though I've seen that, I don't know if that has a negative negative effect but what I noticed that most times is if that happens like a couple of times with a particular person I just see that the person next time when the person gets a task he or she doesn't do it because she knows that oh this person is going to do it so I don't know if that actually answers the question hmm. okay I have a second question Juliet before I go to Joy did you ever find out from them why they were losing steam or this person is not interested let me just move on okay I, I think most of them, they were always given excuses of their own personal businesses or something. Some of them actually 
they used to be like students. And that was why even at some point I was like, okay, I don't want to work. I don't want to work with students again. I wanted people that are already working. Like maybe they have their own personal businesses or they work in a company or something. Like, because students, you know, you cannot, you can, when they, when they tell you they have classes to attend, they have assignments to submit, there is nothing you can actually do because they're actually right. Like they are there for the education first off before any other thing. Yeah. Thank you, Juliet. Brilliant. Let me emphasize that there's nothing wrong with using students. One of the biggest and most powerful volunteer groups in the world are students. When you go to campus fellowships, you know that everybody's volunteering. We're not paid, right? It's full of people who are working and who are constantly um, giving their all. So really, there is no excuse. And where whatever station people are in life is not the reason why they are not giving their all. It might be about whether indeed they have a buy-in. You know, and you don't need to force it. You don't need to. Um, there are some things I should have shared, but we have run out of time. You don't need to force a team together because you cannot put a snail on a wall and it will stand there. No, no, no. But if the snail climbs the wall, you will see it stick to the wall. You can't. Once you take a snail, put it on the wall, it rolls back and falls. But when you see a snail climb the wall itself, so let them snail up to you. All right. Let them come in. I'm joining with you. So I'm saying I'm breaking up. You can hear me clearly. If you can hear me, say positive. If other people can hear me, say positive. Am I clear? Can people hear me? Oh, it's breaking, eh? Yeah, it was breaking for a little bit. Is it still breaking? No, it's fine now, sir. Okay. Okay, so, so let's hear Joy. Joy, please share with us. Question. Okay, um, talking about leadership, and um, thank you very much. The session was interesting. So talking about leadership and um, teamwork, so I'm going to share my personal experience. I, I, as a youth copper, I was posted to a school. Mm. I served in the school. I did very well as, um, as their computer science and data processing teacher. So after one year, I left and they called me back because nobody was saying anything I had to leave. They called me back that I did so well and they made me a permanent staff. Then that was where my problem started. Um, the other teacher that was there before me, the computer teacher was, I was there before me because maybe because of his less affair attitude, the students were more prone to me. I was being given more um, work to do. Sorry, we'll to you. remain invincible. Hello, are you yeah, hearing me? Yes. Okay, so I did everything to remain invincible, not to be seen, so that it will not be that a female is competing with a male. Yet, we, with everything I did in the team, yet nothing was, nothing was working. Um, then came the, um, the owners of the school, because, or let's say the management team, because they were friends with the male computer teacher, and they, they talk a lot. So it became a serious challenge for me. So I was not only um, fighting the guy, or let me not use the word fight. The guy was not only fighting me, the entire management team was fighting me. So it became a serious challenge. As in, I'm saying this thing now and I'm laughing because it was tough at that time, but I stood my ground. I did my work. I made sure I did my work. I improved on myself. I was additional value every time I entered the class and all that, but I couldn't take it anymore. I'm not like asking a question, I'm like trying to share. When I couldn't take it anymore, I was queried for what I did not do. I responded to the query, then I was queried again. I now wrote, so that's where the, my own question now comes in. 
and um, in answering the query the second time, I now ask that what do you expect the staff to do when um, the management will not be management, when they will not do what they are expected to do and they will, be, they, they will always be um, giving you expectations that they know that is not even feasible, that cannot be met and all that. Then I was called to come and defend what I wrote. I came there, um, I was asked what, that like, I, should, I should spell out exactly what it is. I didn't spell out anything, I just said that I have written what I have written. Um, the vice principal insisted that, that I mentioned the names of the people I was referring to. Mm -hmm. I mentioned their names and they said I should go, I left. And the next time I was demoted from secondary, I was teaching the exam classes. Mm. I was demoted to the primary session. I had to leave eventually because the toxicity became so much that it was um, impacting my mental health. Mm. I had to leave. Yes, I had to leave. So I want you to throw light on the response to my query. And like the first person that asked the question, when you are working with toxic people, Trust me, I have worked with, the first time I worked, I worked with toxic people. It was not easy at all. Even with all the emotional intelligence and the social intelligence, it was not easy. Mm. I had to eventually leave so that I don't lose my cool one day and do something that I will regret. Mm. So, mm. so I wanted to it. Brilliant. Powerful contribution, Joy. You know, I, I, I do empathize with you and I can tell you that, um, what you have experienced or what you have shared is a reality in many workplaces. However, the question will be, what should we do when we find ourselves in a job that we like, like Joy, you love your job, isn't it? Yes, I did. And then you are working with toxic people. So you see, we need to be able to separate things. Segmentation is very cardinal to um, survival. I love the job. It's bringing the best out of me but I'm working with people who do not appreciate the work I'm doing or who are very toxic or don't like me. Now, what are the chicks? Joy, remember I gave you an analogy. What are the chicks? Okay, so um, it, the, the chicks should be the people I was working with. Really? They're the chicks you want to protect? Sorry, my reputation and my um and my job should be what should be my um my chicks. Okay. So those are the things that give you joy. Yeah, going to the class, teaching the children, seeing the look on their faces that they really understand. Then those that don't understand, I go the extra mile to organize classes for them during break, and they were willing to sit down and listen. I enjoy doing those things. Yes. Do you think that leaving the place was the best decision you could have made in the circumstance? Okay. Um, leaving the place was not the best. Leaving the best, leaving the place was actually not the best decision, but for my own mental health. Yes. As at that time. Yes. And I was I was pregnant. Okay. As in I was so I I couldn't take it anymore. It was impacting everything. Right. So I had to leave. Okay. Yeah. So you see, Joy, one of the chicks, apart from the children, was also your mental health. Yeah. And the one thing I need to I need to ex emphasize here is that your mental health was a chick, and your mental resilience is cardinal to surviving in this world people don't care about your mental health when they act or react it's your responsibility to protect your mental health while it is easy to say that leaving the place was the best decision for you to protect your mental health there is no guarantee that wherever you go, people will not tug at your mental health because you're not going to leave your mental health at home and go to work. Sure. Your mental health will go with you everywhere. The best thing is to find a place where people are protective of your mental health before they talk, before they act, before they react. But the reality yeah. is that 
No, people don't even know when, what they are doing to impact your mental health. And everybody who else keeps running around and say, my mental health, my mental health, my mental health. In fact, even the running around may make the person go mental. Because yeah, you move from this place to another place, people misbehave. All right? So the, the whole idea in team management is, how do I manage myself? What are the things I need to do to ensure that people cannot penetrate my mental health? Yeah. This is the point. Yeah. The point is this. You may have been tolerating. And tolerance is eight the years. Huh? Eight years. Eight years. Okay, great. <laughs> now, listen. To years. Tolerance is the lowest level of acceptance in the workplace. Whatever you tolerate yeah. will deteriorate. It's tolerance true. means that you are enduring a negative behavior. And when do you know you are tolerating? When the focus of your attention is on the irritating behavior, then you are tolerating. The moment you switch your focus from the irritating behavior to your satisfaction, to your objective, to your original motives, what has happened is you have stopped tolerating. You have started to manage the person. And when you are managing the situation, anything they do will be like water on a duck's back. Do you know a duck? When you pour water on the back, does it get wet? No. It doesn't get wet. It just flows away. Yeah. So it is very easy. But I wish that all workplaces were protective of people's mental health, including those who say we who are advocates of mental health. Just telling somebody, oh, you both pop can affect their mental health. Yeah. There's no measurement measuring tape. There are some things that are impacting you today. If you grow mental resilience, people will do them tomorrow and it won't impact you. So it is the ability to grow mental resilience that enables you to thrive within a team. Because bullying, people will just bully others. They want what you have, but they can't do what you can do. So they come in with toxicity. The aim is to make you leave. Then you leave. You think it is their loss? No, they are dog in a manger. The English call it dog in a manger. Dog in a manger. It's not going to eat it, but it won't let those who are eating to eat. You must develop resilience against those people. What do you need to do, Joy, and everyone who may find themselves in that situation, especially Juliet who asked the question, grow out of the place. Don't go out of the place. Okay. Grow. Grow bigger than that place. Grow bigger than that position. Focus. Focus. There is a, a, an intention to distract you from your sense of purpose. Number two, your sense of belonging. Number three, your sense of ownership. Number four, your team spirit. Once they are able to distract you from that, they are going to break what I call your dish. I want you to write it vertically, your dish. D for dignity. I for integrity. S for spirituality. H for humanity. Protect, that is what you need to gain mental resilience in a toxic environment. Maintain your dignity. Sustain your integrity. Don't downplay your spirituality. Express your humanity. 
Imagine coming into the class when they have annoyed you. Then before you know it, you start lashing out at the students you love. Excuse me, sir. Hello. Can I share something that happened? Yes. Okay, so um, I was teaching SS1 students computer science in the computer lab. The principal and the, um, the dean of studies walked into the class, into the lab, and was like, um, I greeted the children, greeted them, I greeted, I greeted them. The man said, All of you go to the class, turned to me and said, You join them. I turned and told the students to sit down. The students sat down. He went out again, came back and said, Are you not listening to me? All of you go to your class. Um, Madam Joy, join them. The students were looking at me. I turned to them and told them, go to your class. They went to their class. I left, went into the bathroom. I shouted, screamed, washed my face and went back to the class to teach the children. And the children were crying for me that day. I had to I'm not, I'm not saying that it was not easy that day, but I had a class to take and, and it was a double period. I had to finish that class and then went to face the disciplinary committee. You see this, um, this story I'm telling you, I have tried very much to forget it, but each time I remember that day, sincerely, I don't know where I got strength to be calm and not lash out at them that day. Oh. And even my children were surprised. Ah, ma, why are you, ma, ma, with all these things they did and you are still here smiling and you are teaching as if nothing happened. I told the children to just focus on the class. Let's do the class and get it over with. So it, it was very challenging. With everything, I, I try to live above a lot of things. I try to just overlook a lot of things, but yet, you know, when, um, when you walk in a place where you have male, male um, chevronists, yes. that's, um, sometimes yes. that's what you get. That's right. So you're, you have a very powerful um, feedback, you know, from part of what you have shared with us that I think that every one of us here um, is going to walk away with, especially because these are practical experiences that we need to learn from and make up our minds what direction we should turn. And except you're experiencing it also, you might not know what is best for you. And um, part of the things we have discussed today are designed to arm you to make the best decision so that you are not reacting. You are not just reacting, but you are responding to it, okay? When uh, the value that you seek at every point in time, the object for your actions seem to be uh, not reflective of the efforts that you're making. You need to recalibrate, you know, and make up your mind. What should I do in the circumstance? The reason is because we never get a second chance to make a first impression. If you believe you have grown beyond that level, you move because you have grown, you know, Never ever let people um, bully you out of opportunities that have been set before you. And never ever think that you might walk into a place and all they'll be doing there is romanticizing you and loving you and praising you. This would have been ideal. But incidentally, um, uh, <laughs> the world we live in is not a perfect world. It's a fractured world. And what it is looking for is people who will factor in that fracture and um, you know make the best even out of the worst situations. So that supports um, Juliet. If you have not finished learning, don't go anywhere because until you graduate, you know nobody gives you a certificate. So if you if you have not finished learning, don't leave that place. Focus on that thing that you are learning because the night is never so long that the day will not break. All right. I want to thank everyone. I'll just take two now, two or three comments now. Um, your most significant learning points as we shut down. Your was the most significant thing you're taking out of this conversation today. All right. I'll just take a few. Just raise your hand if you if you have one to share. 
What are you taking out of this conversation going forward? Your most important learning point today. We'll take in the order of hands that are raised. Okay, did anyone say that in the chat? Oh yeah, thanks, Juliet. Your most significant learning point, what is the most important thing you've learned in this conversation? And then what would you do differently after now? Feedbacks, feedbacks, feedbacks. Yes, yes. Can you all hear me? Oh, yes, we can hear. Can we share with the microphone? Yes, you can share with the microphone. If you can't find that virtual hand, I hear that some people's uh, virtual hand is not showing. Okay. Julius experience, especially in a one-man business. Yes, I agree with you completely. Yes, you can share. You can unmute yourself if you can't find your virtual hand. What's the most significant thing you've learned today um, in this conversation? Okay, I can still walk away where the toxicity is so bad that it affects your mental health. That's correct. Only you know the measurement of what you can take and what you can absorb. That's correct. In a toxic workplace or environment, you protect the chick. Okay, interesting. Protect what is the most, what is mostly at risk, not what is not at risk. Okay. I didn't hear that. Did you open your mics, Natoya? Okay, a popular lie will always thrive over a silent truth, okay? Got that, Joy. Okay, assumption is the lowest form of knowledge. Interesting. When the value of relationship outweighs the consequence of the offense, you apologize even when you're right. Okay, Manuel, your hands up, you can share. All right. Um, 
it has been a great time learning. Um, prior to this time, I would have reacted to the situation. That was why I asked the question about the toxic um, workplace. Thank you for the answers. I think my take home, my significant learning point is to identify the chicks and protect it. Because um, you, made, um, you said earlier in this conversation that um, the best way to exist is to coexist. We know um, we are not a monk. A man separated uh, is a monk or a god. So we are not a monk. Neither a God. So, so in everything we do in the team, in the workplace, in the workplace, we work with people and those people form the team. So uh, I've learned that I have to look inwardly myself. What are the things I want in the workplace? So I won't allow the toxic nature of people to make me react to it. Rather, I should respond positively. Thank you so much. That is my significant learning point from this class. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Marlo. The best way to exist is to coexist, finding the best ways to relate to people. You know, uh, Josie. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much for this section. I so much enjoyed it. More especially learning from other people because sometimes in our places we find meet with different people and uh, most of times the experiences are not that palatable but from what has been shared this evening I found out that I'm not actually alone it's something that is occurring in different places more especially in the case of Lady Joy's own, I was like, even that experience was even worse than some of the ones I experienced. So I also learned from that, that most of the times, even though it's not the best, but you just have to be, you just have to know how to manage most of these things. So, so I so much appreciate the section. I've learned a lot. I will take a lot of corrections in most of the things. I would have loved to share some, but I believe that we'll have other opportunities to do that. So, so thank you so, so much for the section. I so much appreciate. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for your perspective. Okay, Afe. Hi, Charles. Um, sorry, I joined late. I saw the link um, pretty um, late. Um, is it possible to get a recording? That's what I'm, I would like to find out. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I think we'll, um, I think it's been recorded, so we'll share. Okay, great. Awesome. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. <clears throat> so uh, Shribo asked the question, please, under what topic does the four cardinal fall? sense of ownership, I missed the rest. <laughs> we missed quite a lot. We need to come in early next time. Uh, yeah, so we're talking about the five things that you need to do in order to thrive. Now, I needed to also correct something. I didn't say be invincible, Joy. Okay, so this is the word I meant actually, invincible invincible okay invincible different from invisible okay so invisible means they don't see you no that will negate the first one which is visibility they need to see your work to appreciate the value of your work okay then being invincible means that they your they can't touch your work as good as your work is you know, it is things that are attractive that people want to attack. Nobody, it is what is attractive, they attack. Nobody attacks something that is valueless, all right? So how can I be invincible? Invincible in the context, therefore, means how can I protect the value, my cheeks, 
all right? And then influence. How can I get as many people as possible to my side? Those are the three things. If you are invisible, that's not good in a team. You need to be close enough to your team to influence them and far enough to inspire them. Okay. Um, so that so what we're looking at, um, Shraibu, was under being a problem solver. Four things, four cardinal senses. Sense of ownership, sense of belonging, sense of purpose, and team spirit. So that's what you might have missed. Okay, Juliet, we'll take your comments and we'll call it a day, yes. All right, sir. Um, thank you so much for this session. And I'm really glad there's going to be a replay because I really want to you know, go over the teachings again. Um, I think one of the things I'm taking from here is... Um, you said a popular lie will thrive over a silent truth, uh, which I think it's it's really is something that we even see nowadays. You know, sometimes people project something that that is false, that is obviously false, but because there are a lot of people, you know, backing that same thing and it's all over the place. A lot of people tend to believe it's more than what is even the truth. So, um, and the other thing you said, perception is better than reality. Like you need to be able to, people are not going to see inside of you to know that your intentions are right, but what you, you know, you, what you put out or the kind of um, attitude or character that you put out is what they will judge you by. So I think that's really, really powerful. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. Those who don't belong to the Workplace Transformer Network, um, I think that um, someone on the team will share that uh, that link with us so that you can join and then you can ask any further questions in the group and then we can deal with that. So thank you all for making it a day and joining in the conversation. The value of this conversation is that you have enriched it by your perspective because in the University of Experience, no one is a graduate. The only way we can learn is to share what everyone has and knows. So thank you very much. I wish you all a beautiful weekend until we come your way next time. Keep thriving and get over surviving. Thrive, thrive, thrive. Best wishes. Good to see you, Abdul Latif, Yinka, Afe, Aki, Emmanuel, Ifai, Israel, Josie, Joy, Juliet. Greetings, greetings, Atoye. Greetings, Stella, Shoaib, and Titi. Great, great seeing you here. You know, you can connect with one another. You have a LinkedIn page, share it in the chat box, connect on LinkedIn, keep sharing value with one another, get to know yourselves, let's work with each other. Uh, my own conversation is over from here, but the room will remain open. We'll keep sharing videos until the room tints out. Thank you. The unknown. Oh. put the Google on full screen. I say something that's profound, something that resonates, and it is that frames are to pictures what our clothes are to our body.